Association of the Hazard of City. Uh, patient dose in CT technology is very high. I think the CT is a more dangerous technology for for to expose patient for uh, for radiation. So it's very important uh, to know how to optimize the dose for patient, how to maintain the image quality, how to reduce the dose of patient without affecting on uh, the image quality. So it's very important to know what the meaning of CT and uh, the generations of CT and uh, also this important uh, presentation for technicians to know how to um, how to change parameter to reduce the dose for patient okay and how to calculate the effective dose of patient okay for workers or for technicians uh, there is no exposure, no direct exposure to radiation because our technician will be outside in the control room. So no direct exposure. The exposure limit if the room of CT is shielded well uh, with lead equivalent material. Okay. So the permissible, the permissible, uh, the permissible exposure dose to be outside from 7.5 to 10 microsievert per hour. This is a dose rate, permissible dose rate, outside in the control room. If I get my survey meter and want to measure the radiation in the control room, okay, the dose, the permissible dose or the permissible dose rate or the permissible exposure rate should not be increased greater than 10 microsievert per hour. If the dose is greater than some radiation also. Yes, still coming from the lead glass, okay, during exposure, okay, during exposure of patient, but should not exceed than 10 microsievert per hour, okay. If the value of exposure dose C 10 microsievert per hour, so I have to check again for lead shielding, okay, I have to check for for the place of the point of the, the source of radiation, where the source of radiation coming out to reach shell deck, okay? How is in our, how is in our setting? Yes. So what is the radiation outside of the, the For CT? Yeah. We have to check. We don't have any tool to check. Okay. <laughs> so we need to remember. I told you to book about it. It's important to know the radiation coming out. CT means computerized tomography. Tomography. Sorry, one little mistake. Tomo it comes from tome and means cutting. So it is not a mistake. You will find. Okay, sorry. No, no, no. It is not a mistake. You will find different definitions for this. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you will find tomo picture is a Latin word. Mm -hmm. Tomo is Latin word. Okay. Mean picture. Okay. And the graphene mean to write. Yeah, yeah. In another in yeah. other box we will find another definition so for this. Yeah, okay. So Tomo yeah. may be slice. Yeah. Cuts or slice. Yeah. You are right, and then also not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I would do something. It's called, it's called contextual usage. Yes. Many changes in the context. Not, not the use. Should be. Yeah. So tomography, tomography, as we explained. This is the layout for city room. You will find that inside the city room, this main gantry and this table of patient. Okay, and outside you will find the control room, console, and you will find here that this barrier is the lead, uh, lead shielded barrier. Okay, and this window, okay, lead glass. The principle for for city that we have X-ray source. X-ray tube, X-ray tube produce X-ray. This X-ray is sent on the patient. Some of X-ray photons are absorbed, and, the, and other photons will be transmitted from the patient. Okay, the transmission of photons from the patient is according to the density of components, the density of tissues inside the patient. Okay, and the transmitted photons received by detectors. Okay, these detectors. 
transform the transmitted photons to image, finally. So we can get our image on the monitor of console like that. You will find the image at X-ray tube, produce X-ray, transmitted photons, translated to the language of computer, which is binary. <coughs> Finally, 0, 1. And finally, you will get the image for CT. Here you will find the bone, white. And liver, gray. Different degrees from black, from white to black. It's called the gray scale. It's called the gray scale from white to black. Black, low density. Low density, like air. For white, high density tissues like bone or contrast media. So, the high density or metals or high density objects you will find represented by white color. But the low density objects, okay, <coughs> Very low density objects like air represented by the black color. In between, you will find the gray scale, different degrees from white to black. Okay, each degree you will be, will be represented by tissue. You will find like water, brown, okay, or fats, okay, different degrees. Each one of these degrees represented by gray scale, represented by grayscale and represented by what's called Hounsfield unit. Hounsfield unit, H-U. Hounsfield unit mean CT number. Mean CT number. Means the density, represents the density of this tissue. Represents the attenuation of this tissue. Okay? If you are talking about bone, you will find the density of bone is different than water or air. Okay, so the absorption of bone to the radiation incident will be higher than other tissues like water, like uh, so soft tissue, like fats. Okay, so there is difference in attenuation of photons. There is difference in attenuation of photons. This attenuation is represented by Hounsfield unit or CT number. Okay. The ideal or the reference for attenuation is water. The reference in attenuation is water. You will find water attenuation or water Hounsfield unit is zero, plus or minus five. So if I wanted to measure the density of water, okay, I will find, I will get the value of water is zero, plus or minus five. Okay, this is my reference number. So if I want to check the machine, if I want to check my CT machine, okay, I have to, yes, I have to measure the CT number of water or house feed unit. If there is not accuracy in the CT number, so all calculations are wrong. Because if you want to calculate the house feed unit for any tissue, by this equation, attenuation coefficient mu, okay, for water, I'm sorry, for water minus attenuation coefficient of tissue divided by attenuation coefficient of tissue. Okay, by this equation, you can calculate the Hounsfield unit. Okay, Hounsfield unit for water is zero, okay, but attenuation is not zero. Okay, okay, so attenuation coefficient, okay, for water, has to know that the, the, the designers for, for, for CT machine know well what is the attenuation coefficient for water, what is the attenuation coefficient for bone, <coughs> for fat, okay, all tissues inside our bodies has a specific attenuation coefficient. Using this value, substitute this value in this equation, you will get Hounsfield unit. You will find for hematoma or hemorrhage, specific Hounsfield unit. For stroke, Hounsfield unit. Okay? Any pathology, you will find 
specific hounds feed unit. For focal lesion in liver, okay, hounds feed unit. For renal stone, hounds specific for urates or the type of crystals formed, specific hounds feed unit. According to this value, you can differentiate between types of stones, the renal kidney stones. So it's very important to know the hounds feed unit to differentiate between calcification and the hemorrhage inside our brains. We should know what the machine does know. Yes. So the machine can diagnose for us. Machine can diagnose for us, yes, true. So we don't need to know. <laughs> no, you will have to know the reference. <laughs> okay, you have to know the range. Okay, you, you, you will get the Hounsfield unit for hemorrhage, okay? Example is 200 or 300, but if you, do, if, if you don't know the difference between the Hounsfield unit for hemorrhage and the Hounsfield unit for calcification, how can you diagnose? But the machine can diagnose if you set the machine automatically. Automatically? Uh, yes, yeah, it, is, it is a new science it's called radiomics. Radiomics using MATLAB or using uh, softwares for auto-diagnosis. That's only you are uh, uploading the image Okay, and using software like MATLAB or Python programming, you will find the diagnosis and diagnose it. It's called machine learning. Yes, it's future now. <laughs> future. Yeah. Well, and now we use human learning, and that's why we use radiologists because they come. You will see the I mean, if you get um, diagnosis for like especially abdominal physician, they will tell you liver. Um, there's a mass with harmful unit equivalent to. Liver cell carcinoma. Yes. So they, the regular looks at the, at the shape and the Hounsfield, they can give you. Hounsfield unit and shape. And they can give a lot you. lot of parameters, not only, yeah. not only Hounsfield unit, but Hounsfield unit help you. Yeah, exactly. Help you. Okay, right. now, uh, uh, like Dr. Joski said about machine learning, using computers or software to upload image for a CT, okay, but it's, it is a, compli it's a very complicated. Uh, process, the very complicated process, need a lot of time. For, for, for one pathology, you need a lot of patients, a lot of patients, okay, many thousands of patients for one pathology. And you learn as a computer, you learn the programming, okay, to detect the proper diagnosis. <coughs> but you're right, it will come. It will come, yes, yeah. <laughs> Especially for 2D. For 2D cases like X-ray, like X-ray for gamma camera, 2D, 2D image, not for 3D. CT, you are a lot of a lot of cuts, a lot of cuts. Maybe for CT brain, reach to 200 image, 200 image, too much. But for 2D image, okay, it's easy. Here is X-ray source. You will find here bones high density, here right, and you will find lung black. This CT gantry from inside, you will find number one is X-ray tube, two is the detectors, okay, and three is tube controller which controls the tube, okay, and four is high frequency generator, five onboard computer which control all these components inside the gantry. And six is a stationary computer which controls the onboard computer with outside computer in the console computer. Okay, this from inside. This is the X-ray tube. Okay, you will find here anode and the cathode evacuated tube. Okay. <coughs> As I explained before for fluoroscopy or X-ray production, that we need hot filament, okay, connected with uh, source of current or milliampere, okay, and when you set the milliampere value, okay, this causing heating or causing elevation temperature of filament, okay, which cause vibration of electrons from the surface of filaments. These electrons needed to be, to go towards the target. So we need potential difference KV, okay? which controls the acceleration of electrons, okay, to hit the target and to produce X-ray. As I explained before, that we have two types of X-ray, 
characteristic X-ray and Bremsstrahlung X-ray. Characteristic X-ray is the interaction between the electrons which is coming from which is coming from the filament and the electronic shells around the nucleus, okay, causing the production of characteristic X-ray. But the, the other type is called Bremsstrahlung X-ray, which is the interaction between the electron and the column field around the nucleus. It is deflected from its bus, producing X-ray photon. Okay, it's called the breaking radiation. Here, you will find that different energy of photons and different tissues, bone, soft tissue, muscle, and the, the dose, the absorbed dose, you'll find at the region of low energy, low energy, okay, the energy is low, so the KV is low. So the penetration is not too much. So all photons are absorbent, highly absorbent region in for bone. Okay? And when you increase the KV, so you increase the penetration power of X-ray, so the dose decreased in bone. Okay? Because not totally absorbent, okay? Increasing the penetration power, increasing KV, causing a lot of radiation transmitted, not absorbent. So you will find the absorbent dose for bone decreased. Okay? And this region, low energy, low energy KV, the dominant interaction between the photons and our bodies is photoelectric effect. <laughs> Remember, we discussed it before that there are types of interaction between photons and our body organs. Photoelectric effect, this is the interaction between the photon and the electron in the outer shell, okay? The photon energy is totally transferred to the electron and photoelectron, photoelectron is produced. This is a photoelectric interaction, okay? This is dominant in low energy, low energy range of X-ray. But with higher energy, okay, the second type will be dominant, which is called combaton scattering. Combaton scattering. Combaton scattering, the energy of photons will be divided into parts. One of them will be given to electron to move out to, or to look out from the atom. And the other part, okay, the photon will get this energy and will be scattered. So, the products of combaton scattering is electron and scattered photon. But the product of photoelectric interaction is the photoelectron. Okay? So, with higher energy or with higher KV, you will find a lot of scattered photons. This scattered photon causing image distortion and increase the dose for patient. So it is not good to increase KV, okay? So the interaction will be combaton scattering, which cause a lot of scattered photon, which cause image distortion and increase the patient dose, okay? Here you will find that different KV, and this is the spectrum of X-ray. With 20 KV, this is the spectrum of photons produced. KV, here, you'll find the energy or wavelength, and here is the intensity, okay? With low KV, the intensity is low, okay? The intensity is low. And with higher KV, the intensity is increased. Number of photons produced with higher KV, okay, increased with increasing KV. Increasing KV, causing increasing number of electrons times to power three. Any change in KV will cause increasing times three in, uh, in number of in number of photons produced. Here you will find the characteristic X-ray. It's called the characteristic because it is specific for for orbitals for for uh, for for atomic shells. It's specific for atomic shells. Okay. As I told you before, that's characteristic X-ray. Characteristic X-ray, it's coming from the interaction between the electron and the orbital electrons, okay? Okay? Here you find the mini... Brains, strahlung, it is near breaking... Breaking or holding? Holding, I don't know. Because it slows down there. It is absorbing, actually. 
Not absorbed. Not absorbed. Not absorbed. But, but uh, when the electron coming, okay, this deflect, the, there is deflection in the path of electrons. Deflection. The interaction happened between the, the electron, which is incident on the target atom, and the Coulomb field around the nucleus. Okay, the Coulomb field of the nucleus, okay, attracting, try to attract the negative charge of electron. So it will be deflected, the electron will be deflected from its path. Okay, during this deflection, he lost, uh, the electron lost energy. This energy is represented by Bremsstrahlung X-ray. Yeah, the fuse energy moves slowly and it's better to break it. Or breaking Yes. You will find generation. You will find the generation of CT. Nowadays, you will find that the patient, now we need X-ray tube and detector, okay? The patient will be in the middle, okay? If I have single row of detector, single row of detector. Now we have 16 row of detector, 16 row of detector. Each one is around from 800 to 900 detectors. From 800, each row contain from 800 to 900 detectors, okay? Now we have 16 row of detectors. Nowadays, you will find some vendors like Philips or uh, Toshiba, okay? Producing or uh, their products, 640 detectors. 640 detectors. You will find machine like that, okay? So it's very fast. The machine will be very fast. Scan a lot of area of patient or scan wide range of patient in no time. You can scan for brain less than one second. Scan time for brain less than one second. Can you imagine? It's very fast. Okay, reducing the time of scan, reducing exposure to patient with the same image quality, maybe better. Okay, so generation is coming from First generation, here you'll find one detector, not one row, one detector. The first generation of CT and one and the X-ray tube, the beam of X-ray is a thin beam, not fan beam, thin beam of radiation, like that. Okay? <coughs> so the time was for how long? For a few hours. For the first image, yeah. okay, first image, first slice, we'll five minutes. Okay. So if you have 20, 20 slices, yeah. 20 slices, so you need 100 minutes. One hour. More than, uh, yeah, around one hour. Uh, 100. Uh, okay, the first image for CD, this is the first one. It's 1970. It's not bad. Not bad, yes. <laughs> Second generation, okay. Second generation increase the number of detectors in the same row, okay. With using fan beam, okay. Mounted around 30 detector array, okay. And the X-ray tube move around the patient, move around the patient. It's called translate rotate, okay. So after that, this is second generation, okay. And the X-ray tube moving around the patient to cover all slides, what I need to scan, okay? And for third generation, you will find the fan beam is in angle is increased, okay? To cover the patient, to cover the patient, so the angles will be reduced. If you cover a lot of information, okay? So the angles will be reduced, number of angles or number of degrees. So here, you will find that number of row number of detectors increased in the same row and the angle increased. Third generation, it's our machine. A lot of machines like third generation. But the difference in number of rows of detectors. Our machine is 16. Another one, 64. And 32, and so on. So the difference is the number of rows of detectors. This patient like that, you will scan only one slice, but if you increase number of row, you will cover big area. Yes, big area. You will cover big area of the patient, okay, with increasing number of rows. Fourth generation, 
Force regeneration, you know that uh, it's, it's so expensive because here we are used movable X-ray tube. X-ray tube is moving, but fixed detector. Detector is like ring of detector. It's fixed around the, around the patient. Okay, so expensive because we need a lot of detectors here. So it's highly expensive. Okay, and fifth generation you will find here using five target anodes, not only one target anode, but four target anodes using four target anodes here. Okay, for producing large beam or big beam of X-ray, wide beam. Okay, so can cover. Yes, it's used in uh, for uh, for coronary, for coronary angiography. Can cover the heart of patient. Okay, in no time. It's called step and shot technique. It's only one exposure. One exposure cover heart region. Okay. Sometimes some vendors like uh, Philips Philips has a machine like that. Okay, you will find nowadays dual energy, dual energy machine using two X-ray tube. One of them gave 80 kV and another one gave 140 kV. Okay, that's used for reducing the dose of patient. It's image of construction. <coughs> As you can see, this is called filtered back projection and raw back projection. The reconstruction algorithm, which is used for image reconstruction or CT image reconstruction, the standard reconstruction algorithm, it is called filtered back projection. Filtered back projection. This is the raw material of image. It's a raw image without filtering. And this is the image after filtering, okay? Filtering remove all frequencies or all signals that I don't need it, okay? To get finally the image. Nowadays, using another reconstruction algorithm, it is called iterative reconstruction algorithm. Iterative reconstruction algorithm is used for, with low dose. With low dose, you can scan patient with very low dose and to remove the noise of image using this reconstruction algorithm. It's called iterative reconstruction algorithm. We have one already in our machine. It's called iDream. You will find the commercial name, different commercial name. In Toshiba, it's called AID3D. You will find another name uh, in, uh, in different machines, okay? But the same concept, iterative reconstruction algorithm, okay? The main idea of this reconstruction algorithm how to reduce the dose and enhance and overcome the noise of image, okay? But this is software. Software. The aim of CT scan, less patient absorbed dose, optimum diagnostic image. This X-ray tube, I want to calculate the absorbed dose of organ, absorbed dose of patient, okay? So I have to know the energy loss, loss of energy in this unit of mass, okay? If I get, if I can calculate the energy loss per unit of mass, now, <coughs> I can calculate the absorbed dose of patient. Here you'll find that this is a slice, slice profile. Slice profile is the dose distribution. In the center, you'll find the high dose. And the peripheral, okay, you'll find less dose for patient. Okay, this is the slice profile or dose profile for one slice. For one, for one slice. So, if I can calculate the dose and the mass of patient, and the mass of this slice, so it will enable me to calculate the dose of one slice. And if I have 10 slices or 20 slices, using multiply. Okay, so the idea to calculate the dose of one slice, after that, multiply the dose of one slice with the length or number of slices. Okay, so you will get the total dose during the scan. But uh, this uh, dose from the for single slice is uh, personal. Yes. From patient to patient is different. So you need to actually calculate for each patient. Uh, it's a surprise for you that there is no accurate, 
accurate estimation for CT patient tooth. There is no accurate estimation. Okay? Because if we scan a patient, same patient, and we enter the parameter for CT, you will get values for those the same if we scan a patient, a fat patient. It is not logic. It is not logic. Thin patient get those different than fat patient. If you are a thin patient and you want to, to, to do CT scan for chest or abdomen, you will get not the same dose. You will not get the same dose. But my machine will give you the same dose. How come? Oh. <laughs> okay, because all machines is calibrated using phantoms. Okay. So the phantom size is fixed. 72 centimeters or 16 centimeters for head and abdomen. But for patient, nowadays using a technique for estimation, the dose of patient is called size specific dose estimate. Size specific dose estimate. This technique enables you to calculate the dose of one slice. The dose of one slice from the, from the CT image itself, using the image, this is the image of CT, like brain or abdomen, okay? Through, through calculation of the diameter of patient, okay, we can get effective diameter. This effective diameter, okay, used for calculation the dose of one slice, okay? So there is no accurate estimation for the patient dose. No accurate estimation. We only make approximation for the patient dose. Here if you get a lot of number of slices using integration, integration for the dose. Okay, you can calculate the dose for all slices, but there is factor affecting, so integration of those and Divide by the width. Divide by the width. Of the slice. Yes. Okay, you can get parameter is called CTDI. CT dose index. CT dose index. And this CT dose index, now you calculate it. Now you calculate CT dose index. But when we divide another parameter is called pitch. What's the meaning of pitch? Pitch is the table distance. Table speed per rotation time. If we scan patient and we adjust the pitch factor, it's called pitch factor, to be higher, that means that the table speed will be high. If we adjust the pitch factor to be low value, okay, that means that the table speed will be low. When you scan a patient with a high speed for table high table speed, that means the patient is exposed to low dose of radiation. Okay, because the table is moving so speed, so fast. Okay, but if we scan a patient, if we scan a patient with pitch factor very low, that means that the table speed is is low, low speed. That means the patient is exposed to too much radiation. So the pitch factor technician can uh, yes can change it according to the type of scan according to this patient uh, the patient age is old man or mm -hmm. child or baby okay a lot of parameters affecting on the dose of patient one of them one of the most important parameter is called pitch factor so we talked about KV KV milliampere third one is called pitch factor okay after that we will calculate something is called dose lens product DLP. dose lens product okay it's calculated from ctdi volume times length of scan okay after that we will get this value DLP. it's called dose lens product now finally how can I calculate the dose of patient? For any scan, for any patient scan, you will find DLB and CTDI volume. From DLB, you will convert this value to an effective dose. 
How come? Using, you remember, conversion factor, tissue weighting factor. Tissue weighting factor, it is related to the sensitivity of organs. When we scan a patient for CT chest, the sensitivity of chest is different from abdomen, pelvis. Okay, so the sensitivity of organs to radiation is different. So according to the sensitivity, according to the tissue weighting factor, we can calculate the effective dose. Finally, you will get DLB. DLB is a dose density product. If I want to calculate the effective dose of a patient, I have to multiply according to the body organ, which is exposed to radiation, conversion factor times DLB. Okay? Okay, you can find DLB, you can find the conversion factor, very easy. For head, 0.0023, for neck, 0.005, for chest, 0.017, for abdomen, 0.015, for pelvis, 0.019. This is the tissue weighting factor, okay? So, if you refer the patient, okay, to do CT for abdomen or CT for pelvis, it's easy. Now to calculate the effective dose of patient, okay, you can get summary page or summary those calculations from technician. I want to know the DLB of this patient, total DLB, if he scan for chest or abdomen or total DLBs, okay. After that, you will find or multiply the value for the conversion factor. You will get the effective dose in medicine, okay. The factors. That determine radiation dose to patient. Okay, we have time or? Yeah, so. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> okay, we talked about KV, increasing KV, increasing the dose to patient. Okay, increasing milliampere, increasing the dose to patient. Okay, so you have to increase KV in some cases, and you have to increase milliampere in some cases certain conditions and increasing the pitch factor pitch factor increasing that means table speed will be increased that means the radiation dose will be less okay and the image quality okay you have to op optimize mm -hmm. okay make an optimization between yeah. according to the type of scan like example for instance if you want to scan for petrous bone petrous bone need high resolution image so if you increase the pitch factor greater than one you will find the value for pitch factor from 0.5 to 2 from 0.5 to 2 okay so if we increase the pitch factor greater than one so you have to be sure that now you lost data okay now you lost resolution for image so for patient, if you want to scan for petrous bone, need high resolution. Find details, a lot of details in petrous bone. So you have to reduce the pitch factor to be less than one. The question you want to ask me that when I reduce the, the pitch factor, the dose will be increased. Okay, so now the scan range or scan lens for, for petrous is too short. So it is not significant. Second question, um, you always do a scanogram before you do the yes. CT. Yes. So the scanogram is... Um, uh, Very low dose. And high, high pitch, huh? or not? Yes, high pitch. It is, is yes, high pitch. And scanogram is useful yes. for... First thing, to determine the start and the end of patient. Second, for dose modulation. Mm. I will discuss later yeah. how scanogram is very important for dose modulation. Yeah, and so it's also helpful because it gives us practically a normal X-ray for the chest. Set in chest is helpful. Yes. Sometimes you see more things on the scanogram you don't see another picture. The scanogram is really helpful. Yes. Yeah. Especially in cases for scanogram for for if you want to measure the lens mm -hmm. for bone mm -hmm. or uh, antiversions, angles, like that. Now, if we use milliampere, low milliampere, you will get. The image is noisy image. Noisy image. With higher milliampere, you will get best image, but the dose is increased. So there is direct relation or direct proportional relation between the milliampere and dose. If we increase 
the do if we increase milli ampere, you will increase the dose for patient. Sometimes when we scan baby or child, okay, a lot of technicians do this wrong. This do this mistake. Increasing milli ampere, increasing value, or using the same value of milli ampere in case of adult. It's it is not right. It is not right way because you will get image very smooth. Very smooth image. You need the details in image. You need details in image. So if you scan patient with high scan baby or child with high dose, it is not good for image quality and for patient dose. Sometimes he thought that it, it's good to get image quality. No, it is not good image. You need details. You need the resolution in the image. Okay? Sometimes when you smooth the image, when you smooth the image, the image will be blurred. No details. You can't detect the lesion. You can't detect the margin of lesions. Okay? So increasing milli ampere, increasing dose of patient, maybe give you smooth image the limit. After that limit, okay, increasing the, the dose has no benefit. Has no benefit. Okay? Here, according to body size, you have to adjust the milliampere according to body size. If the patient is fat, you have to increase the dose of patient. If the patient is thin, you have to reduce the milliampere. Okay? Here, <clears throat> this image of abdomen 120 kV and 120 kV is the same kV, but the difference in milliampere, or it's called milliampere second. Milliampere second means multipl multiplication of milliampere with time. Okay, so here is 15 milliampere and here is 30 milliampere. You'll find here is a noise in image. Here is greater noise because reducing the milliampere. How can I measure noise? Using calculation is called standard deviation. Okay, using this value you will get the noise. You can measure the noise inside the image. Okay. Here, different four image. Okay, low. Here resolution is high. Okay, it's more sharpness, more resolution, more resolution, sharp image. Okay, here the dose is high. So the image is blurred, okay? Smooth, more smoothing means blurred image, blurred image. So you have to be, you have to optimize the image. You have to, to optimize milliampere value to get this image. Not blurred image, not noisy image, okay? Yes, very important to modulation. What's the meaning of modulation? Automatic exposure control. That means you have to vary the value of milliampere with patient contour, with patient size. Okay? Sometimes you will scan patient for chest abdomen pelvis or neck chest abdomen pelvis. So you will scan patient for different thickness. Okay? So according to the thickness of patient, you will vary the milliampere value. This technique is available on our machine and a lot of vendors today. Okay? And it's important to manipulate the, the, to change or vary the milliampere or the value of milliampere with the patient size. Okay? Using a scanogram to know how to, how to vary, 